Hello there. At the end of the Data General Micronova series, I said, uh, let me know if you wanted me to do a demonstration video on SimH here uh, for how to use the Nova stuff on a modern computer. And there were a couple of people who wanted to do that, and I kind of wanted to document it for myself for future reference as well. So today I'm going to do a quick run through of how you can get SimH set up and running on your modern computer so you can experience Data General stuff just like this. Now I want to start here by just going over the software and what exactly it is, because it's a little weird. So SimH is a multi-machine simulation package. I may accidentally say the word emulator or emulation at some point in this video. I don't think that's quite correct. Simulation is probably more accurate because this doesn't really try to do anything like cycle accurate. And there's a lot of stuff that it just doesn't do or take shortcuts with. So it's different, uh, but it's trying to give you the experience here, and it's hitting some pretty lofty goals to do that, so uh, I would say it's worth any sacrifices they make to make it just work. Now, this is very far from only a data general Nova emulator. Uh, Nova is just one of the many different kinds of machines that this can emulate, so I'm only going to cover Nova here because I've only used the Nova stuff, and that's all that is of current interest to me, but this can do a lot more, and many of the things that I'm going to talk about here will apply to pretty much every machine in this. Some of them I am going to show you other machines because Nova is actually one of the less fleshed out examples in SimH, so it's going to, you know, not be the best representation if you're going to use something like the PDP-11. Now, I'm going to use the OpenSimH fork, and that's about all I'm going to say on that. I don't really know what their squabbles are. I think there's something to do with uh, one of the developers yoinking their content for copyright reasons from it, and it had to be replaced. I don't know. It's not really... I don't want to get involved in that. So, anyway, I'm going to use OpenSimH. Now, I have already downloaded the source code and compiled it here, and... I am going to recommend compiling the software. I hope that if you're looking to emulate a mini computer, that you're at least open to the idea of having to compile your own software because uh, frankly, if you can't make it past this step, this probably isn't the software for you because this is really hard low level stuff. Now there are some dependencies and things like this, and I will defer you to the official SimH documentation for how to compile the software. However, if you're using Linux and have similar goals to me, I have written a brief little quick walkthrough on my wiki for how to do this. Uh, basically on Linux, you want to run the dependency checker and then just CMake. That's pretty much it. It's not that difficult. So I have everything compiled into this bin folder here, and you can see all of the different machines that you get. Now, SimH doesn't work as like one program that you run to control many different machines. It compiles each machine type into its own binary, which makes it easier and weirder to manage. Uh, it, it, it's definitely a different kind of experience. For one, there are no GUIs in any of this, as far as I'm aware. Maybe some of these can render graphics or something that'll pop up like a graphical window, but I haven't seen that and I haven't explored that. Now, I already have this in my path, so I'm just going to open a terminal here, and just as a basic way of getting started, I can run Nova, and there we are in SimH. But it's not actually running the computer simulation yet, and we're not really doing anything. Matter of fact, we probably never even want to just run the SimH command for Nova like that. Now, using SimH is where this becomes really difficult, because the documentation for SimH is, well old and doesn't really cover the modern versions that well. Um, if you try to read through this, I mean, it starts listing C files. It's not really that uh, user friendly. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk you through some of the things and I'm going to refer you to my guide here again on my wiki because I'm going to take you through everything step by step for what the basic options are for how you might want to configure this thing. All right, now I've started the SimH Nova program again here just so I can walk you through a couple of commands and features that this has to set up. So if you can see the SimH line here, you are at the SimH prompt. You're not yet emulating a vintage computer. From here, you can actually access many configuration options and just regularly use files and data on your computer. This is opened in this folder here. So if I do ls here, we can see the same directories that are right there and this file that I have here. 
Now, there are many commands at the operating system level that you can do from the SimH shell. I can change directory into, say, that SimH test folder. I can go back up. I can list my present folder. Uh, there are a bunch of things you can do. I think help here will tell you a lot of things that you can do. But you can see that there are commands in there that are not related to your host system. Now, before we get any farther into these commands, I want to talk about the concept of scripting SimH. SimH will allow you to run any command from a file, that way you can save your commands to be run later. This is gonna be really critical when you go to set up a machine and want to keep your configuration for later. But it is important to think of these as scripts. They are not configuration files. Basically, you're just running different commands to set up the machine how you want. So let's make a very simple script here to start. First, I'm just going to make a new folder, simhdemo, and we're going to go into that folder. Now, I'm just going to make a new text file. I'm going to call this demo.simh. The file extension doesn't actually matter, uh, but that's just for my own sake to know what this is. All right, and here is this file open in a text editor. Now, we can put anything we want in here. So I'm just going to put echo. This is a test script and save that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a terminal here again. And then I can run Nova, and then I can use the demo as a parameter, and we can see it will print out this is a test script, and then we're left at the prompt. Now we're left at the prompt because we didn't add anything as like a execution to do afterwards. Now one easy thing we could do is just add quit to this, because you have to type in quit if you want to exit SimH. So if I go back to my text file here, add quit to the end of this, I can rerun that, it will start out the simulation, print this is a test script, and then quit SimH. Now I'll also demonstrate this. I can get rid of pretty much everything in the quit command, leave it at just Q, and that will also work because SimH supports shorthanding the commands as long as what you have typed is unique enough to identify it. Now to make my life a little bit easier, I have created a simple runner here that I can use to right click a file and have SimH open and run the script. And I have the terminal to have a different color background and font that makes it really obvious this is a SimH terminal. But this is exactly the same as any other terminal. I can just change this over to another theme uh, and and you can see that that is basically the same as everything else. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to start the script by just right clicking SimH and running NovaScript here, but that's just the same as running Nova and then the script name from the command line. If you wanna know how I'm doing this in KDE, uh, I'll link I have a KDE service menu GitHub repository where I put all of this stuff. I do a lot of weird things to the service menu because it's kind of awesome. Now to start, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the hard disk image from the software kit into here, and we're gonna set it up to use that. Now this file actually comes from one of the software kits that are available for SimH to help you get running on the machine a little more easily so you don't have to like install an operating system or something when that can be kind of tricky. So I'm using the RDOS v7.5 for the Nova emulator here. Now let's have this print out something a little more helpful. Let's say that this is the Nova HDD bootstrap example. And we're going to configure this to use that hard drive. Now SimH has a lot going on, as you can see in the help command here, uh, but the help is actually really good built into the program. It does a pretty decent job of documenting everything within each simulator to help you figure out what you need to do. Now, there are some things that you are going to need an outside push to know, so let me cover some of that. To know what you can configure on a machine, you're going to need to run show features. This will show us these things here, so we can configure CPU, PTR, PTP, TIO, and all of that. But there are aren't really any descriptions here of what any of this is doing. And this is where I'm gonna run one of the other SimH instances, because if I go to the PDP-8 emulator, run show features, uh, you'll see that everything is very, very well documented here, and it's really easy to figure out what is what, unlike on the Nova, where it's just, you know, here's some acronyms, good luck. But back to the Nova, what we need to look at is DKP. Now there's two kinds of hard drives that SimH supports for the Nova. One is a moving head, one is a fixed head. And I do mean the head of the drive, not the platter. This is, it's kind of weird. Not like, it's not like floppy versus hard disks. Uh, but everything we're gonna use here is going to be DKP. So just pretend DSK doesn't exist. We're going to attach to DKP zero 
the Novados disk file here. I'm really bad at typing this correctly. It is disk pack zero. There we go. Now, depending on what files you have for SimH, if you're just starting from scratch, you're not going to have to worry about this because this is all you're going to have. Uh, but you may need to know what kind of drive that is. So if I do help DKP, uh, you can see that it supports many different kinds of drives. And we would set these kinds of drives by running set DKP, the number, and then the drive type. Now, by default, it uses auto size and it takes the size of the file that you are mounting and uses that to calculate what kind of image that it would align with based on the size of the data that the real drives would have held. To see what auto size picked here, we can run show DKP zero and we'll see that it picked a Diablo 31 or a 4047 for our hard disk here. Okay, minor correction, that Nova DOS disk is one I made. The file that you would actually download from the software kit would be rdos d31 dsk. Uh, my bad. Okay, I'm going to attach this to a fresh SimH instance here, dkp0. Okay, so it's the same thing. If we do show dkp0, we'll see that that's there. Also, if you omit the number, it will show it for all drives on there. And you can see how it has auto size set for the unused drives for when you add one of those later. Now, to boot this, it's really easy. We just tell it boot dkp0. We just tell it which exact drive we want to boot from and we're in. From here, we can just hit enter again. It will boot the default RDOS sysgen file, which is just sys.sv. We'll punch in a random date. I like 188 because it's kind of similar, but do you see that? I'm hitting enter and it's not doing anything. This gets to one of the weird things. I'm going to hit control J for right now. It'll take that. And then I'm going to hit control J again to input the time. We'll fix that in a moment though. But from here, we can just run list and hit control J again, and we can see that it printed out all the files. Now, the only thing we did to get this running and set up was attach the drive here. So let's go ahead and copy that into the script. And then we can also copy the boot command here and put that into the script. Now, if I run this again directly, it will immediately go into the boot prompt. But there are some other things that we may want to do, such as fix it so that the enter key actually works. Now I'm going to start making some commented sections here. We're going to call this HDD setup and I need to make a section that is terminal setup. So we're going to set TTI to dasher. And what this will do is configure the keyboard and SimH emulation to pretend that it is a dasher terminal, which will work a lot better for us. So now if I save this, go over here and rerun this, I can hit enter. This is an RDOS quirk. Don't worry about this. Just hit C whenever you're done. Now I can type in my fake date again. And when I hit enter, it actually works. Uh, it didn't work because I didn't type in 88, but it has mapped the enter key to something that makes more sense for the Dasher terminal emulation. Now we can get a little trickier here. Every single time you boot the machine, you have to enter in all of this information before you can get to the prompt. And that's a little annoying. But SimH has a way of automating that. Now, I have already done this in a separate file, so I'm going to bring this in, login automation, and I'm going to paste it here. But let me walk you through what this does. So expect is a more fancy SimH command because it has some logic capabilities where it looks for this matching string to be printed. When that happens, you can then run any other command. In this case, we're running a command that sends some text to the simulation. We're going to send it just a new line so that it will accept what the default file name is. When we see type C to continue, we type C. After we send it data, we are running another command for continue, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second, but you can probably figure it out. And to close it out, I also answer the date and time options. Although this is my old time option, you don't actually need to put in a time. Now, if I save this script, run it, we will see hands off it will automatically log into everything here for me. That's pretty handy. Now the continue command here just basically means to return to the emulation. When you are in an emulated environment, this is running RDOS. You can hit control E to drop back to the SimH prompt. From here, we can do the other things. So now if I run LS, we see my real Linux system host directory. Uh, but to get back to the emulation, we just run continue. 
Now you can pause the emulation and then change settings on the fly while it's booted. Uh, say you're working with floppy disk images, you can use the attach command to change which floppy disks are mounted to sim H while it is running. Then you can just run continue and you can go ahead and work with the new disks and data. But yeah, remember this after the fact. If you want to get more software into the SimH emulation, I recommend you watch my video about using the Micronova to load other software because I go over how you can load files and data from the magtape images that exist on the Nova's R Forever archive. It's a little complicated, and you really just need to learn more about the RDOS setup than you do SimH itself, so it's a little out of the scope of this video because it's going to be completely different for every machine. But if you're using Nova emulation specifically, I recommend you check out my other video for that. Well, I think I'm going to call it there. There's still a lot more to how SimH works, but that will let you get started with it. Uh, it is very obtuse and not super well-documented software outside of its own online help, which is really good. It's worth drilling down sometime if you have an issue with something. So you can do something like help CPU as a device, and it'll tell you more information about the CPU and what the options are. And it's really nice to work around in the software like that. I don't recommend that you try and rely on any media outside of it because it isn't very up to date. Matter of fact, the tab completion that exists in this now doesn't even exist in the documentation. And if you download one of the pre-compiled binary versions, it's also not in that. You really do need to compile it from scratch and then play around with the live software. But I hope that helped you get up and running with SimH. Again, I'll link my wiki page down below that has some more examples. But that's it for now, and I'll see you later.